from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Claire Tucker and Zachary Scott in Mildred Pierce. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A mother's love for her children has always been a great subject for drama. And tonight we bring you the unforgettable story of Mildred Pierce, first created by James M. Kane in his famous book and turned into a superior motion picture by the Warner Brothers Studios. And as our stars, we have Academy Award winner Claire Trevor and popular Zachary Scott. Now, Act One of Mildred Pierce, starring Claire Trevor as Mildred Pierce and Zachary Scott as Monty. It's only coincidence that a police car happens to be cruising by this lonely stretch of road along the Pacific Ocean not far from Malibu Beach. There's a house on the beach, and a man is just leaving. Stay where you are, mister. Uh, uh... (laughs) Good evening, officers. That's the way you usually leave a house. Smash a window and jump. <laughs> I'm an eccentric. Start making sense, mister. Okay, but you're not going to believe me. Hang on to him, Frank. I'll take a look in the house. Okay. All right, what's your name? Uh, Wally Fay. I own that cafe, Wally's Place, a few miles up the beach. Who owns this house? A man named Berrigan. Uh, look, I'm on the level. See, I, I, I know it's going to sound awful screwy. You keep saying that, but you don't tell me anything. I... I'm a, I'm a friend of Mrs. Berrigan's. Well, she drops by the cafe tonight. She, uh, she says, why not drive out here to the beach house? So naturally, I... Uh... Naturally. Well, we're in the house, and she says something about fixing a drink. But she don't come back, see? So I, I start looking. Only the doors are locked. All the doors, and she's gone. Ran out, huh? huh. Locked the doors so you wouldn't chase after her. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe she wanted to get me in trouble. Nice guy like you? Looks like we run into something, Frank. Need any help? Yeah, plenty. There's a man in there on the floor. Full of bullets. Yeah. His name's Monty Berrigan. Only I didn't kill him, and I, I don't know who did. As soon as I saw the body, I smashed the window. We're in the house. I... I'll phone headquarters. Mother, where have you been? What's happened? They won't tell me anything. Who won't tell you anything? Mrs. Berrigan? Yes? We're from the police. The inspector would like to see you. Why? What's the matter? If you just come with us, please. Mother. It's all right, darling. Whatever it is, I'll take care of it. What's wrong? Why can't you tell me what's happened? We didn't want to say anything in front of your daughter. It's your husband, Mrs. Berrigan. He's been murdered. <laughs> Mrs. Berrigan. I'm Inspector Peterson. I apologize for bringing you down here for nothing. For nothing? Well, we, uh, we know now who killed your husband. We're just booking him. So you're free to leave, Mrs. Berrigan. Who did it? You're entitled to know. Yes, sir. Bring him in, McNally. He's just in the next room, Mrs. Berrigan. Bert! Hello, Mildred. He's the man, Mrs. Berrigan. Bert Pierce. Bert, no. I won't let you do this. Mildred, I... That's all, McNally. All right. Yes, sir. But what about Wally Fay? How do you know he didn't do it? Wally Fay? Yes, I saw him here a few minutes ago when I was waiting. Oh, yes. Fay had no motive, Mrs. Berrigan. Bert Pierce had. He didn't do it. I know he didn't. The murder was committed with this pistol. It belongs to Pierce. That's fact number one. Fact number two, he doesn't deny killing Mr. Berrigan. Seems to think it was a very good idea. Bert didn't kill him. He couldn't. He's too... too kind and gentle. Kind and gentle? Then why did you divorce him? Because... because I was wrong. It's taken me four years to find that out, but now I know I was wrong. Four years, huh? Let's see. Uh... Now, Pierce was in the real estate business then, wasn't he? Yes. He and Wally Fay were partners. I married Bert when I was 17. Started a life of cooking and washing and having children. Two girls, Vida and Kay. Only Kay died. Pneumonia. 
She wasn't quite eight years old. Pneumonia. I'm sorry, Miss Bergen. Bert used to blame me for spoiling Vida, but I, I couldn't help it. I, you see, I, I had lost one child, and I... Well, it was the year after Kay died that Bert and Wally Faye broke up. Wally had the business, and Bert was out. That's it, Bert. Yeah, well... What package? A dress. For Vida? Yes, it's for Vida. You know, the piano recital. Where'd the money come from? I'm doing what I'm doing now, baking cakes for the neighbors. Well, I earned the money. That's right, Mildred. Throw it up to me that I can't I'm support... I'm sorry, my... Bert, but I don't say half as much as I could with nothing but bills staring us in the face. Well, maybe you wouldn't have so many bills if you didn't try to bring up that kid like her old man was a millionaire. No wonder she's so fresh and stuck up. Well, one of these days, I'm going to haul up... If you dare. If you dare to touch Vida, All I'll... right, all right. Trouble with you, you're trying to buy love from the kid, and it won't work. Besides, she plays the piano like I shoot pool. And what if I do want it to amount to something? She's all I've got, Bert, and I'll do anything for Vida. Anything. You can't do her crying for her. I'll do that, too. She'll never do any crying if I can help it. It's not right, Mildred. I'm not smart, I know, but I... Hello? Yes? Oh, yes, he is. It's for you, Maggie Biederhoff. Yeah, Maggie. Yeah, well, I, I, I can't talk to you now. I told you not to call me at... Okay, yeah. Yeah, later. Well, that's just fine. Maggie means nothing to me. You know that. You better run down and apologize now, look, to you her. Look, you keep this up, and one of these days I'll call your bluff. Well, I'm calling yours, once and for all. Look, my child comes first in this house before either of us. Maybe that's right and maybe it's wrong, but that's the way it is. I'm going to do the best I can for Vida. And if I can't do it with you, I'll do it alone. Go ahead and try it. See how you get along without me for a while. Bert! If you see that woman again, you're never coming back here. I mean that. I do what I want to do. Well, then, pack up, Bert. All right, I will. <clears throat> about Vida. What about her? Well, when she comes home, maybe you could just tell her that I, I'm... Oh, I'll, I'll think of something to tell her. Mildred, I'm... Oh, go on, Bert. There's nothing more to say. Just go on. That's the man you say is kind and gentle? There's a lot more you should know, Inspector. Go ahead. Well, I dreaded the moment I'd have to tell Vida her father had gone. I was still in the kitchen when I heard her come in. Mother? Oh, in here, darling. How did the lesson go? Very well, I think. I, um, I saw Father down the block. He was crossing the street. He, he had his suitcases. Vida, look, darling, I... Well, you may as well know it now. Your father and I have decided to separate. He's not coming back? No. No, I don't think so. I I can't tell you any more now. Well, if you mean Maggie Biederhoff, Mother, I must say my sympathy is all with you. Vida, please. Now, it was just just little things, things like your dress. My dress, it came? Yes, it's up in your room. Oh, Mother, but why didn't you tell me? That night, for the first time in my life, I felt all alone. There was so much to remind me of Bert how things used to be with us. What great hopes we had. But I didn't have much time to feel sorry for myself. The doorbell rang. It was Bert's ex-partner, Wally Fay. Believe me, Mildred, I told him a thing or two. Bert must be off his rocker walking out on a girl like you. You didn't come here to tell me that. <laughs> That's your life I didn't. With the bird out of the way, I was hoping maybe there's a chance for me, honey. Oh, cut it out, Wally. Oh, now, one of these days, you're going to have a weak moment. I want to be around when it happens. Well, you're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? Ah, you're not the kind of a gal who can get along by herself, honey. You're going to get lonesome. Am I? <laughs> lonesome already, huh? Good night, Wally. Oh, now, now look. Oh, well, can't shoot a guy for trying. Mother, hmm? did Wally go? Oh, Vida. Yes, he's gone, dear. 
Is father going to marry that Biederhoff woman? I don't know. But I do know that you should be asleep. Well, I've been thinking. You could marry Wally if you wanted to. Oh, don't be ridiculous. We could have a new car. Maybe even a new house. I just hate this house, Mother. I don't like it either, dear, but... Well, that's no reason for marrying a man I don't love. Well, why not? Either. Oh, I, I didn't mean it. I didn't. I don't care what we have, just as long as we're together. Oh, darling, be patient. You'll see. I'll get you everything you want. I promise. By baking cakes and pies for our neighbors? Oh, Mother, I feel so sorry for you. So you wanted your daughter to have everything in the world. Well, why not? But no money, no job, no business experience to help me get one. Finally, I took the only job I could get, a waitress. I made a deal with the owner to furnish the pies and pastry. It didn't leave much time for sleep, but it kept the house going, and it paid for Vita's piano lessons and bought her new clothes. But then came the day when Vita found out. A waitress! My mother, a waitress! Oh, I'm so ashamed. Well, I took the only job I could get, Vita. But waiting on tables. Oh, why did you have to degrade us? Maybe now I know why father left. <laughs> Oh, Vita, I didn't mean to hurt you. I, I didn't. Oh, don't you see, darling? I'd never have taken the job if I hadn't wanted to keep us together under the same roof. And besides, if, if I can learn the restaurant business, I... Well, well, uh, someday I can open a place of my own, maybe. Give me time, darling. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, Mother. Oh, I am, really. And, and if anyone asks me, I can always lie to them. Oh, no. You'll tell them that I'm a waitress. But Why? After all, if we're going to have our own restaurant. No, it wasn't quite that easy, Inspector. A year went by and my restaurant seemed as far off as ever. And then one day I rushed into Wally Faye's real estate office. Mildred, well, what do you know? Hello, Wally. Sit down, sit down. And I just don't get any ideas, you know. This is a business. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I'm going to open up a restaurant and you're going to help me. Oh, please, okay, Wally. Okay, okay. Well, I found the location I want. It's an old house that hasn't been lived in for years. Mm -hmm. And it's right near a busy intersection, which means it's good for driving trade. Mm. And not another restaurant for three miles. Yeah, listen's good. What's the address? 35904 Glen Oaks Boulevard. Oh, let me see if i got a listing on it. Oh, Wally, I've got to get that house. You know what the angles are, and I don't, but I want that property. Well, listed all right. Yes? See, ten thousand dollars. That means they'll that means they'll take eight. <laughs> Owned by the Berrigan estate. Yeah. Berrigan. Uh, you know them? Some old Pasadena fan. Well. Well, it says here that the Berrigan estate has already lost two pieces of property because of back taxes. <laughs> Relax, honey, and watch little Wally go to work. That's how I met Monty Berrigan, Inspector. Wally and I drove out to see him. He was at the beach house. Where we found him tonight? Yes. I let Wally do most of the And that's our offer, Mr. Berrigan. How do you like it? Mrs. Pierce wants to buy the property, but she doesn't want to pay for it. Well, she needs time, Mr. Berrigan. Once, once the restaurant gets on its feet, you'll get $9,000. I'm asking ten. <laughs> and you'd settle for eight. It's a very unusual offer, Mrs. Pierce. You think you can make 9000 clear in a year? Well, Mr. Berrigan, I've figured very conservatively. Yes, I think I can make it. Now, now, look at it this way. If the place makes money, you get $1,000 more. If it doesn't, you get your property back in much better condition than it is now. No, I'm afraid I'm not interested. Oh, please listen, Mr. Berrigan. I'm putting every cent I have into this place. Believe me, I haven't very much. I can't afford to lose any more than you. Look, I have all the information right here in black and white. I know exactly what it will cost and how much I can expect to make. I know I can swing it. I know I can. Very well. It's a deal. What? Oh. Well, just like that? Why not? Take care of the details, Mr. Fay. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Pierce, how does it feel to be the owner of a white elephant? Oh, it feels wonderful. <laughs> Nice guy, that Berrigan. Mm. He likes you, honey. Does he? He's good looking. <laughs> yeah, but no brains. <laughs> now, what about that husband of yours? 
Bert. Mm-hmm, Bert. You're still married to him, you know. Well, what I mean, you, you open the restaurant and boom, Bert's creditors start trying to take it away from you. Just ask a lawyer about community property. Oh, well, I'm seeing Bert on Saturday. He's taking Vita for the day. Mm-hmm. Just remember, honey, no divorce, no restaurant. <laughs> don't want to even talk about it, Mildred. Not now. Where's Vita? She's getting dressed. She'll be down in a minute. Bert, it's for her sake. I've got to think of her future. Vita thinks you're wonderful, doesn't she? Well, I'll have to know a lot more about this deal with Wally Fay. It's pretty obvious you mean a lot to Wally Fay. I can't help it if you believe everything he tells you. Bert, listen. I've put everything I've got into this restaurant. I've got a big loan from the bank that's got to be paid off. Suddenly, everything's starting to take shape. Well, I've worked hard and long, and I'm going to get that divorce. No, no, you're not. There's very little you can do about it. If you don't mind, tell Vita I'm waiting for her. Not a very pleasant story, is it, Inspector? So you filed for divorce. Yes, and I quit my job. Spent every minute at the restaurant trying to help speed things along. Then, one Sunday morning, I had a visitor. Where do you find the energy, Mrs. Pierce? Well, the silent partner. Come in, Mr. Berrigan. Well, I decided I've been silent long enough. I came by to check up on my investment. Mm -hmm. Well? It's wonderful. I'd never recognized the old place. But today's Sunday. Why don't you get out of here? Oh, I'd love to, but I'm awfully busy. Look, isn't the bar nice? I've got a nice bar, too. At the beach house. I also have an ocean. Well, why should people come here to eat and go someplace else for a drink? That's why I put the bar in. Now, getting back to my ocean, let's have a swim and forget all about our investment. <laughs> no. No, I couldn't possibly. As you grow older, Mrs. Pierce, you will find that the only things you regret are the things you didn't do. You win, Mr. Berrigan. Yeah. I'll drive you home. Pick up your bathing suit and... And if your daughter would like to come along... Well, that's very nice of you inviting Vida. She'd love to come. Oh, she would, huh? <laughs> but, uh, she's away for the day. Well, I'm beginning to think Vida's a very understanding daughter. Wonderful. You know, I can't even remember the last time I relaxed like this. Now, uh, tell me, you live here all the year round? Oh, no. No, I have the old family mansion in Pasadena. Oh. Complete with iron deer on the front lawn and the ghosts of my ancestors. I moved down here in the spring. Oh, it must be wonderful. Yes, but lonely. How about a drink? Oh, no, thanks. You know, it's none of my business, but um, I think you drink too much. I know. I do too much of everything. I'm spoiled. <laughs> Marty Berrigan. Uh, that's an unusual name. I'm an unusual fellow. Berrigan. Uh, uh, Spanish? Mostly a little Italian thrown in. And just what do you do, Mr. Berrigan? I loaf. Oh, in a highly decorative and charming manner. <laughs> you know, you're very beautiful in this mind. Mildred, look at me. I'm not very impressionable. I lost my awe of women at an early age. But ever since you first came here, I, I thought of nothing but what I'd say to you when we met again. Now I can't say anything. You take my breath away. Do I? I, uh, I like you, Monty. <laughs> you make me feel, oh, I don't know, warm and... And... Wanted? And beautiful? Yes. My heart's beating like a schoolboy's. I've fallen in love, Mildred. I've fallen in love with you. And that was when, Mrs. Bergen? Three years ago? Yes. And now Monty's dead. And you think Bert killed him? You're wrong, Inspector. In 
just a moment, Act Two of Mildred Pierce. With our American servicemen in many countries around the world, they have a wonderful opportunity to observe new customs and traditions. What might have seemed strange before is becoming pretty familiar to them. For instance, the business of greeting someone. In Europe, the handshake is almost universal, and uh, usually it's one good solid shake instead of a continuous pumping. In certain Pacific Islands and among the Eskimos, two people rub noses when meeting. In other localities, uh, sniffing or smelling of an acquaintance is the approved form of recognition. In Japan, the bow represents the courteous greeting. Well, all this might sound strange, but as our servicemen have observed, it's simply the custom of the country. We use the handshake, of course, and the salute between men in service, but between really close friends, relatives, and members of the immediate family, a kiss is not considered bad conduct, even in public. It's uh, not that we're any more affectionate. We simply show our affection in this way. But to many people around the world, this form of greeting is unusual, to say the least. They just simply wouldn't do it any more than we would rub noses, simply because it's not one of their customs. The same is true with other customs and traditions of all countries. The way of doing things may be different, but the ideals are the same. Whether it's greeting a friend, preparing a meal, observing a religious principle, there is no right or wrong way of doing it. It all depends upon the customs of the people where you live. And it's by observing these customs that our servicemen are helping to maintain goodwill with other people in other lands. And now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Mildred Pierce, starring Claire Trevor as Mildred and Zachary Scott as Monty, with Joy Terry as Peter and Hal March as Wally. <laughs> A few hours ago, Monty Berrigan was murdered. The police are holding two men under suspicion, Wally Fay and Bert Pierce, with a case against Pierce building stronger and stronger. So you think Pierce is innocent, Mrs. Berrigan? Well, we don't. Now, um, you were telling me about Monty Berrigan, how he fell in love with you three years ago. Well, it's... It's hard to remember the next few weeks, Inspector. So much was happening, Monty, in the opening of my own restaurant. Your restaurant? Well, it wasn't all mine, not really. Wally Fay had worked very hard, and I cut him in for a third. And since I hadn't paid for the property, Monty owned another share, a sort of partnership. We were swamped with business that opening night. It was long past midnight before we closed the door. Well, well what do you know? She's finally coming out of the kitchen. Oh, <laughs> Give me a chair, Wally, before I fall down. <laughs> Hello, Monty. Well, you're a great success. If you can say that a month from now, maybe I'll believe it. I've been getting acquainted with your daughter here. And guess what, Mother? Mr. Berrigan promised to take me to the races. Only if your mother comes along. Well, I'd love to. Wally, do well, me a favor. Just name it, honey. Take Vita home. Home? Oh, Mother, anyone would think I was a child. I, I, uh, I figured on taking you home. Oh, please, Wally. You should see the kitchen. They'll be washing dishes for another hour. And I wind up with a Girl Scout. Wally, will you please not refer to me as a girl? Good night, darling. <sighs> Good night, Mother. And I trust we may meet again soon, Mr. Berrigan. Very soon. I trust so, Vita. Yep, go on, small fry. That's a very cute youngster, Mildred. <laughs> no youngster anymore. Well, it's been quite a night. Oh. My white elephant may turn out to be solid gold. Oh, Monty, would you excuse me for a minute? I've got to check tomorrow's menu. Now, don't you ever... Bert. Bert. I didn't mean to bust in on you. They let me in the back way. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Berrigan, my, uh, my husband. I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Pierce. If you don't mind, I'd like to speak to Mildred. Well, I'll try to lose myself at the bar. What is it, Bert? It's about the divorce. You can have it. Oh. You were right. You can get along without me. Fine. Oh, Bert. I, I never thought it would end like this. Who knows how anything's going to end? Well, all the luck in the world. Thank you. Leaving so soon, Mr. Pierce? I think I'd better. Oh, but doesn't this call for a drink? You know, in the Barragon family, there's an old Spanish proverb. One man caught... Well, I guess that means you don't want to drink. I apologize, Mr. Pitt. Monty hadn't meant to be that nasty, Inspector. He seemed genuinely sorry for that little incident with Bert, or 
Maybe I just thought he was sorry because I was in love with Monty. You still haven't given me one reason why Bert Pierce isn't the murderer. In fact, you've given me a very good reason why he is. He had the motive, Mrs. Barragon. Jealousy. Excuse me, Inspector. This report just came in. Oh, thanks. Uh, pardon me, Miss Barragon. Uh-huh. You sure of this information? Well, you know Charlie, sir. Well, tell him to keep on it. Yes, sir. Who's Ida Cohen, Mrs. Berrigan? Oh, she's my business manager. Well, she tells us you phoned her from your office late last night and asked where Mr. Berrigan was. She says you seem quite upset. Oh, well, it was just a business matter. Well, tell me something else. Why did you take Wally Faye to the beach house? Did you know that Berrigan was lying there dead? No. No, I didn't. Oh, then you were at the beach house. Oh. Why didn't you tell us that before? And why did you run away? Because you knew Berrigan was dead? No. And why were you trying to pin the murder on Faye? I think you better tell me the truth now. I did it. I killed Monty Berrigan. You? But why? Your restaurant was a success. You were in love with him. You married him. You... I didn't marry him until much later. But at the time, too many things were uncertain. But the restaurant was a success. I opened others. In three years, I built up five restaurants. Everything I touched made money. And I needed it. I needed it for Vida. She was a young lady now with expensive taste and several boyfriends. One in particular, Ted Forrester. One night, Monty and I joined them for a round of the night. The handsomest couple on the floor, Mildred. Mm. Vida and Ted. Yes. She likes him, Monty. A lot, I think. Who wouldn't? He's got a million dollars. What's the matter? Nothing. Just run out of jokes, I guess. No, tell me. What's wrong? I've had a little bad luck, Mildred. I won't be able to afford many more evenings like this. You need money? Why didn't you tell me? It's not quite that bad. Not yet. Monty, I... I I want you to take this cash. Mildred, please. Oh, you've been awfully good to us. Now, please, take it. All right. I want it distinctly understood that it's only a loan. Oh, yes. At first, it bothered Monty to take money from me. And it became a habit with... After a while, Wally Faye found out about it. The accountant told me. Two thousand dollars in six weeks. What's the idea, Mildred? We owe Monty a great deal. We paid him off long ago. Now, look, baby, I'm in business with you, but keeping Berrigan in monogram shirts isn't my idea of business. You've done all right. And when you opened up that cafe at the beach, I didn't ask to be cut in, did I? I can do what I want with my own money. And so can I. Look, look, when you walked out on Bert, it was okay with me. But now you're falling for a guy who's a worse foul ball than Bert ever thought of being. He's no good, Mildred. He'll bleed you dry. Suppose I happen to be in love with him. Okay. Okay, I, I guess I finally know just where I stand. That's right. Now you know. Do I dare come in? Oh, I do. I wish you would. Things are getting a little out of hand here. I hate all women. Huh? <laughs> Laughing boy seems burned at the edges. A small, green-eyed monster. Wally jealous? Doesn't sound like Wally. No profit to it. Well, I just told him I was in love with Monty Berrigan. Are you? I thought I was once, but not now. Mildred... I know I shouldn't say this. If this is about Monty, I agree with you. It's Vita. She's been borrowing money. From whom? Anybody who'd give her any. Waitresses, mostly. They're scared to say anything. You know how it is. See that they're paid back with you, please. I'm sorry I had to tell you, Mildred. I don't blame Vita entirely. A couple of times, Monty was with her. Well, I brought those statements you wanted. Oh, yes. Now, about the Laguna Beach unit... Hello, I... everybody. Oh, hello, Vita. Oh, and Monty. Well, come in. Big business conference? Just a teeny one. It can wait. I'll go. So? I wish I could get that interested in work. You were probably frightened by a palace at an early age. Mother, look. Look what Monty gave me for my birthday. This necklace. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, darling, it's beautiful. And, uh, there's something else for your birthday. Out the window there. I hope you like it, Vita. Oh, Mother, not a car. Oh, it's just gorgeous. You happy? Am I? Well, how about me, young lady? After all, I picked it out, you know. Oh, Monty. The two nicest presents I ever got. Come on, let's go for a drive. Nothing I'd like better. Oh, Monty. 
I'd like to talk to you. Bye. Run along, Vida. Dent your fenders. Alone? Oh, well, I'll see you later at the club. Uh, be careful, darling. Thanks a million, Mother. What's the matter, Mildred? I want you to stay away from Vida. Why? If I suddenly sprouted two heads? Or has that Ted Forrester boy been complaining to you? It isn't funny. Vida's not 18 and spoiled rotten. What's that got to do with me? Kids at that age, they're all thoughtless. I blame it on the way she's been living. I blame it on you. I don't think you understand Vida very well. She's not like you, Mildred. You'll never make a waitress out of Vida. You can't help looking down at me because I cook food and sell it and make a profit. Which, I might point out, you're not too proud to share with me. I take it easy, Mildred. You're interfering with my life. And worst of all, with my plan for Vida. And I won't stand for it. And that's that. You want Vida and your business and a nice, quiet life. And the price of all that is me. You can go back to making your pies now, Mildred. We're through. Oh, just a minute, Monty. You've had expenses taking Vida out. Here. If this isn't enough, I I've can... always wondered how it felt to take a tip. Thanks. Just mark the account paid in full. <laughs> I saw nothing of Monty for over a month, Inspector. And suddenly, Vida was spending all her time again with the Forrester boy. The one with a million dollars? Yes. The restaurant business was falling off. Nothing drastic, but enough to keep me constantly on the job. One afternoon, I... I had a caller. Ted Forrester's mother. I'm sure you want me to get to the point, Mrs. Pierce. Yes, of course. It's simply this. Somehow, your daughter has the idea that... Well, I can understand it. Any girl wants to get married. But Ted has no such thing in mind. I want that made perfectly clear. Uh, just a minute. You mean they're engaged? Vida and your son? Yes. Well, why should Vida want to marry Ted if he doesn't want to marry her? I'm not a mind reader, Mrs. Pierce. But if you or this girl employ any more tricks trying to blackmail my son into marriage... Trying to what? I'll prevent this marriage. I shall prevent it any way that I can. I don't think you need worry, Mrs. Forrester. Having you in my family is a pretty dismal prospect. Good afternoon. Mother? Yeah, what's up, Mildred? Vita and I were going to take a uh, drive. Wally, do you mind? This is private. Hmm. I think I know what's bothering you. Well, Wally knows all about it. Wally knows that you're talking about getting married. Getting married? I am married, Mother. What? Ted and I were married on my birthday. I'm sorry, but it's done. But why didn't you tell me? Oh, I wanted to so many times. But you're always so busy. And besides, I was afraid. Afraid of me? Oh, Mother, I've been so miserable. I made a mistake, and I I didn't know how to tell you. Oh. You you don't love Ted, is that it? Yeah, that's right, Mildred. She made a mistake. The only thing to do is an annulment. That's the clean, quick way to handle a situation. Oh, I, I suppose it is, but... Well, can it be done quietly? Oh, you just leave it to me, Mildred. Uncle Wally still knows all the angles. <laughs> oh, and you should have seen Mrs. Forrester's face when Wally told their lawyer... Oh, Mother, you'd have died. When Wally told their lawyer what? <laughs> that the annulment was going to cost them $20,000. <laughs> you asked for money? Well, of course I asked for money. They wanted the annulment, didn't they? And the publicity? But, Vita, how could you do such a thing? How could you? And I got the money, see? A nice big check. Oh, I'll have to give Wally part of it, but there's still enough money. <laughs> That's what you live for, isn't it? You'd do anything for money, wouldn't you? Even blackmail. Oh, for heaven's sake, Mother, grow up. Yes, it's about time I did. All right, Vita, from now on, things are going to be different. I'll say they're going to be different. Why do you think I went to all this trouble? Why do you think I want money so badly? All right, why? With this money, I can get away from you. Vita! From you and your fried chicken and your kitchens and everything that smells of grease. I can get away from this house and its cheap furniture and away from this town and... Stop it! I'm seeing you for the first time in my life. You're cheap and horrible. You think just because you made a little money you can get a new hairdo and some expensive clothes and turn yourself into a lady, but you can't. 
Because you'll never be anything but common. Common like your father who, who lived over a grocery store. Common like your mother who took in washing. With this money, I can get away from everything that makes me think of this place and you. Give me that check. Peter. Oh, not on your life. I said give it to me. Oh, you're tearing it up. Yes, I'm tearing it up. Now, get out of this house. Get out! <laughs> We'll hear Act Three of Mildred Pierce shortly. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Recently, the Institute of International Education in Los Angeles, California, opened an office for its new affiliate, the Center for International Students and Visitors. When foreign visitors, sponsored by public or private groups, visit Los Angeles, the Center provides them with help in seeing and learning the American way of doing things. It's been found that, for the most part, visitors would rather see how Americans live rather than how they make money. Within a recent two months period, the center was host, in one way or another, to a Finnish publisher, a French director of police, a Malayan journalist, a United Nations delegate from India, a director of education from Iceland, a German lawyer, a Korean editor, and an Austrian composer. Visitors usually stay from two days to three weeks. And when they return to their own countries, they take with them a clear and honest picture of how Americans live. Thanks to an organization which has dedicated itself to the spreading of world amity. An organization which has discovered that by helping others, you help your country. We pause now for station identification. rises on Act Three of Mildred Pierce, starring Claire Trevor as Mildred and Zachary Scott as Monty, with Joy Terry as Vida and Hal March as Wally. <laughs> it's almost dawn now, but the lights still burn brightly in Inspector Peterson's office as Mildred Pierce continues her story. I had said some awful things to my daughter. I had driven her away. I went away for a while, too, but not far enough. Something kept pulling me back. Finally, I gave in and came home. But no sign of either. Not even a letter. Mexico, huh? Mm -hmm. So that's where you've been. Mm -hmm. People still eating in restaurants, either? Not enough of them. I'm glad you're back. Seen anyone I know? Vita, for instance? Why don't you forget her? I can't. She's still my daughter, and I want her back. Personally, Vita's convinced me that alligators have the right idea. They devour their young. <laughs> Hello? Hello, is Mildred there? This is Bert Pierce again. Oh, just a moment. Your ex-husband, he's been calling every day for two weeks. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Bert. I just got back this morning. You all right? Yes, I'm all right. Uh, how about dinner? dinner. I'd like to see you, Mildred. Or would you rather I didn't? No, I'd be glad to see you, Bert. Uh, you can pick me up at, um, well, the house at 7.30. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know why, Ida, but well, it's going to be nice seeing Bert again. Well, I thought you might like this place, Mildred. A little noisy, but since our friend Wally failed... But I still don't know why you insisted on coming here. I thought it was a good idea at the time. Now I'm not so sure. Oh, what does that mean? Look over there. Under the spotlight. It's Vida. She's a dancer here. I'm sorry I did it like this, Mildred. I, I, I just didn't know how to tell you. Where are you going? I'm going to get Vida out of here. I guess that means I better find Wally first. Mildred! 
children. Well, sit down. Sit down. How is the trip? Sometime I'll tell you all about it, Wally. Right now I'm going to take Vita home. Oh, Vita didn't know that? No, but I'm hoping you're going to help me. Oh, not me, honey. But I'll give you a little advice. If you want Vita to do anything for you, better hit her over the head first. Where do I find her? Her dressing room's right straight down the hall. Well, quite a surprise, Mother. What can I do for you? Vita, I want you to come home. Really? Vita, it isn't easy for me to beg like this. You must think I'm on a string. Go away, Vita. Come back, Vita. Oh, no. Darling, look... We'll have the house redecorated. We'll get all new furniture, a new piano. Oh, you'd like it, I know. Would I? No, Mother, I want a little more than that. I want the kind of life that Monty Berrigan taught me, and you won't let me have it. I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused you, but I'd only start all over again. You know how I am, Mother. If, uh, if I could give you the kind of life Monty taught you, would you be willing to come home then? But you couldn't, could you? Drop it again sometime, Mother. I'll be here. There was just one thing left for me to do, Inspector. I had heard that the old Berrigan mansion in Pasadena was now up for sale. No, now look, Mildred, you can't be serious about buying this old barn. Yeah, and you're not a very good salesman, are you, Monty? You here alone? Well, somebody has to be here to show the place. Need I add that I'm broke? What about the beach house? The only thing I haven't lost. You don't want to buy this antiquated tomb, you'd be out of your mind. Oh, I don't know. A little remodeling would do wonders. You're not fooling me. I remember too well. I remember how it was with us once, and so do you. Something neither of us can forget. Then you can do me a great kindness. If I can. Ask me to marry you. Why? Is that the best you can do to show your enthusiasm? You went to considerable trouble to get rid of me once. Naturally, I'm a little startled. I have a good reason for wanting you to marry me. Vida. Why Vida? Your reason for doing anything is usually Vida. What's your answer, Monty? I told you once that you were the only woman in the world for me. I loved you then. I love you now. That I can't afford you, Mildred. All I have left is pride and a name. I can't sell either of them. Sorry. But we can still... No. I won't go on taking tips from you. Of course, if I owned a share in your business... Hmm. How much of a share would your pride require, Monty? Don't put it that way, Mildred. I'm not enjoying this. How much of a share? I think I can leave that up to you, Mildred. It's a deal, Monty. Sold. One Berrigan. We were married a week later, and I set about restoring the old Berrigan mansion to the showplace that it once was. Soon now, I'd be ready for another talk with Vita, but before that happens... I shouldn't have stopped by, Mildred, but I'll only be a moment. No, I'm so glad you came, Bert. Mildred, I got a lot of nerve asking this, but are you really in love with Monty Berrigan? No, not exactly, but we understand each other. And now maybe Vita will come back? I know you think I'm a fool, Bert, but oh, I can't help it. I uh, brought you a wedding present, Mildred. A wedding present? Out there, on the terrace. But what's out there that I... Vita. Bert, did you ask Vita to come with you? No. No, she called me up. She tried to pretend it was something else, but I finally got the truth out of it. Oh. She wants to come home, Mildred. Oh. I'll go and get it. Change, Mother. Really, I will. I promise. I, I'll never talk to you like that again. Oh, I said some nasty things myself, darling. If only we can trust each other and... I don't believe it. I simply don't believe it. Oh, Monty. Hey. Tears of joy at seeing me again, I hope. Of course. Uh, you look lovely, prodigal. About time you came to see us. See you. But I'm staying. I'm the new star boarder. Wonderful. Just don't call me father. For the next few weeks, I was happier than I'd been in years. The restaurants were running into trouble, but with Vita back, it didn't seem to matter. I planned a wonderful party for her, Inspector. It, it took place last night. Yes, so I understand. Only I wasn't there. A sudden meeting came up at the office. The accountants and a lawyer named Hopkins. At 11 o'clock, we were still at it. I've told you a dozen times, Mrs. Berrigan. In simple language, you owe my clients money. 
If you resist, you'll be forced into bankruptcy. It's as simple as that. I haven't a cent of ready cash. So I guess that's that. Any ideas, Wally? Mm -hmm. uh, well, you can still uh, manage the restaurant. Well, that's very nice of you, Wally. Stealing the business right out from under me and letting me run it for well, you. Listen, I've got to put up the dough to keep us out of court. Uh, you've been bleeding this business dry so you can live the way you have since Vita came home. You said so yourself. I know, I know. The creditors want your hide and I can't stop them. Not anymore, I can't. It'd still be all right if Monty hadn't forced the issue. What? Monty got to do with it. Well, he wants to sell his share of the business. I got to go along with him or I'm out too. You didn't know? No. You married him. I didn't. Let's go, Hopkins. As soon as they left, I called the house. Ida answered the telephone. But Marty isn't here, Mildred. He drove off about 20 minutes ago. Just after the party broke up. Then let me speak to Vita. Well, uh, Vita's gone, too. I think some of them went over to the Adams for a dip in the pool. If you want, I... No, can... no, it's not too important. Thanks, Ida. There was a gun in the office safe. It had belonged to Bert. I hadn't wanted it around the house. I had a hunch where Monty would be, Inspector. The beach house. He was alone when I got there. And, and I killed him. You're lying, Mrs. Berrigan. We know you weren't alone in the house with him. We have proof of that now and of a few other things. Yes, sir. You can bring her in, McNally. We've had a slant on you all night, Mrs. Berrigan. You were the key. I had to put the pressure on you. Well, the key turned. Vida! The sergeant will tell you where they found her. They picked the girl up at the airport. Took her off a plane headed for Arizona. She didn't like it very much. I don't understand. Mother, Your I... mother just told me everything. Why did you kill him? You told him? You promised not to tell you. You promised you'd help me get away. Vida, don't say any more. Doesn't matter now. That's all we needed to hear. Miss Pierce... You were already at the beach house with Berrigan when your mother arrived there, isn't that right? Let her alone. I, I didn't know Vita was there. I expected Monty to be alone. There was a record on the phonograph. They didn't hear me come in. Hello, Mildred. Well, we weren't expecting you. I'm glad she's here, Monty. I've got something to tell you, Mother. I love Monty. He's going to divorce you and marry me. No, Vita. He isn't. Oh, there's nothing you can do about it. I can do this much about it. Mildred, use your head. Shooting me won't solve anything. It would solve a lot of things. But I can't do it. I just can't do it. Mildred, wait a minute. Oh, let her go, Monty. I put okay, down the gun and address. walked out of the room. I could hear their voices yeah, yeah, as I went out toward Monty, the car. don't joke like that. Joke. You think I'm going to marry you, you crazy? But you love me. You told me you love me. After a few drinks, I say a lot of things. Listen to me, Monty. I didn't hear the rest. I was starting the car and the noise of the motor. But then I heard the shot. I rushed back into the house. He said horrible things. He told me to get out. He laughed at me. The gun was there and I... Oh, I didn't mean to. You've got to help me, Mother. I've got to get away before they find him. I can't get you out of this, feet. What are you going to do? Who are you following? Give me the police. Oh, no, Mother, no. Think what will happen if they find me. Think what will happen. I don't care anymore, Vita. Yes, you do. You do care. It's your fault as much as mine. Police headquarters, Sergeant Monty. Oh, you've got to help me. Hello. Help me, Mother. Just this one. Hello, police headquarters. I'll change. I promise I will. Hello. I'll be different. Hello, Mr. Police headquarters. Help me. So, you, you tried to help him. I drove aimlessly for 10 or 15 minutes. Then on the road, I passed by Wally's cafe. Suddenly, I had a wild idea. A wild idea to frame Wally's face? No, not that exactly. I knew you'd see through a frame up, but it might take hours. And by that time, Vita would be on a plane, and I could tell you the truth. Yeah, not this time, Mrs. Berrigan. This time, your daughter pays for her own mistake. Okay, McNally, take it downstairs. Mother, I'm sorry, Vita. I did the best I could. 
Don't worry about me. I'm really not worth it. Oh, uh, see that Faye and Bert Pierce are released. Well, we could use some fresh air in here. It looks like a nice morning out there. Hey, you can go now. We'll call you when we want you. You know, Mrs. Berrigan, there are times when I regret being a policeman. Well, they're booking the girl, Inspector. You told McNally to release the others? Yeah. Hey, come here, Frank. Take a look out the window. Hmm. Pierce and Mrs. Barriger. Together. Yeah. Maybe that's where they belong. Together. In a moment, our stars will return. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Not so long ago, the city of Port Angeles, Washington, adopted a five-month community improvement plan, a plan designed to teach a community how to improve culturally, economically, socially, and spiritually. The plan was such a success that the United States State Department brought over eight people from the little town of Rosenheim in Bavaria to see how the plan worked. At first, the Germans were suspicious. But their suspicions gradually disappeared as they recognized the Americans' genuine friendship. For three months, they lived in various Port Angeles homes, learning about American democracy. They visited schools, worked in groceries, hospitals, welfare offices, and on the local paper. By comparing ideas, both the Germans and their hosts discovered that they were working for the same ideal, to advance the principles of freedom, tolerance, and brotherhood. When they finally left for home to teach others how typical Americans really lived, it was a Rosenheim lawyer who best expressed their gratitude and appreciation when he said, I had no notion of American life, since I thought that usually both husband and wife worked, that children were poorly brought up, that there was no family life in our sense of the word. I've come to the conclusion that it's a religious motive that makes the American people so willing to help not only individuals, but whole nations toward freedom and recognition of human rights. Yes, like so many other Americans, the good people of Port Angeles had learned that by helping others, you help your country. Now, here's Mr. Cummings with our star, and we invite them forward for a curtain call. Claire Trevor and Zachary Scott. Now, Irving, do you have an exciting story for next week? We certainly do. It's a recent 20th century Fox screen hit. The shocking drama of a pickpocket who discovers he's accidentally stolen some vital information wanted by both the government and the communists. It's Pick Up on South Street, and we'll have three outstanding stars. Sparkling Terry Moore, that fine actor Stephen McNally, and superb Thelma Ritter in her unforgettable role. Well, it certainly was a thriller. Good night. Pete at Fort Ord, Chuck and Don, good night. Good night. It was a wonderful evening. The Hollywood Radio Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Hollywood Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. 